Hi, um, I'm Jennifer Pollum. I'm the Executive Director of the Ocean Conservation Foundation as well as Director of Conservation at Rainbow Reef Dive Center here in Key Largo. We are just off the shore in Key Largo here, diving in the National Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, and we're on Molasses Reef, which is one of the most beautiful and popular reefs in the Keys to dive. We've had unprecedentedly high temperatures down here this summer. We usually have high temperatures, we're in Florida, but it got really hot really quickly, really early here. And the corals we're finding really aren't responding very well. We're seeing a lot of bleaching all over the reef, especially with the branching corals, the staghorns and the elkhorns, which are some of the most important species to have on the reef. When temperatures get too high, they expel the algae that lives in their cell wall, and that's what gives them about 90% of their food intake. The algae photosynthesize, and then the coral uses that for food. When they bleach, they expel all of that algae, and that's why they're white, because the algae is what gives it the color. And unfortunately, with the rate at which we saw the bleaching come on, we're looking at a lot of mortality. Corals in some way, shape, or form are older than dinosaurs. They're older than your favorite shark or crocodile. They're actually older than land plants. So in that 500 million years, they survived multiple natural cycles of warming and multiple natural cycles of cooling. And in that time, they evolved, they adapted, they acclimated to the environments, they shifted north and south around the world to form one of the most biodiverse ecosystems on this planet that we simply call coral reefs. Since 1970, Florida's coral reefs have actually decreased in biodiversity and structure. We've actually lost 98 to 99% of our original stony coral habitat. The Coral Restoration Foundation was founded in 2007, and we are the largest marine conservation nonprofit restoration organization working in the Florida Keys, and we aim to be a leader in the field globally and help where we can. Welcome to the Tavernier Nursery. This is the largest ocean-based nursery in the world, and it is the largest nursery that we have. It is home to 500 trees which is about 30,000 corals at full capacity. There's nowhere else in the world that you can swim through a living forest of coral like you can in this nursery. Here is just one of them. We have multiple nurseries. Together they hold 50,000 corals and this is our biggest, making up 30,000 of them. Our founder, Ken Niedemeyer, developed the coral tree, which is now recognized as being the best way to grow large quantities of certain species of coral really, really quickly. The coral tree works really well, partly because it's mid-water. And so since the coral is vertical in the water column, as water passes by, the corals can get the maximum amount of oxygen and nutrients and just water flow so that they're really in an optimal environment. And that's actually what allows the corals to grow much faster on coral trees than they do in their natural reef environment. Once the coral gets to be about a football size, we'll harvest the coral from the tree and then we'll return it to a nearby reef. The heat was not a total surprise to us. We knew that because this was an El Nino event and from predictions from government agencies, we knew that this was probably gonna be a pretty hot summer. We partnered with land facilities to be able to bring corals out of the ocean, out of those in-situ nurseries into these land-based facilities so that we could control the water temperatures. The rescue effort came in two different phases. The first phase that we did was to safeguard the genetic diversity that we have. So we wanted to make sure that we had small samples of every single genotype that we have. Once that was done, we kind of went to stock management. We pulled out all the corals that were looking the best and um, healthy here so that we could safeguard that stock um, so that we could hopefully take them back after the summer heat event is over and continue to use them in the restoration process. Coral bleaching is actually a natural response to the from the coral to a warming or uh, a sudden change in its environment. The problem is when that change is too extreme and or it happens for too long. And so in this particular case, in 2023, we saw warming starting to happen a full month before the average summer temperatures peaked. 
And so now the corals had to work with these extreme temperatures that were unprecedented in our history. And that's why we're seeing bleaching at such a stronger threshold because the temperatures are so much higher and for so much longer. The climate changes. It's time and time again throughout history we've had uh, natural climate swings, but it happens slow enough for corals to be able to adapt and, ev and evolutionize to deal with that. But the fact of the matter is that the anthropogenic factors of climate change that are happening right now are causing the climate to change so rapidly and our waters to warm so quickly that it's too fast for corals and many of the mammals and animals that rely on coral reefs to be able to adapt to that and, and deal with it.